Well, it is uh, two hours and 30, 39 minutes into the 5th day of April, 2021. It's Monday. And we're picking up, once again, earlier start than expected, uh, even after an all-nighter. Uh, well, the beginning of the month, we were starting the week on Wednesday. Now we're starting the week... Uh, just a few hours later, and this is sort of the uh, the new reality that uh, uh, we will start things uh, at an earlier time. Uh, so the the week flows a lot smoother, uh, but at the same time, my body is given a chance to rest. Let's see if I can get this right. Here we go. Got the motion right. Uh, so um, that's kind of how things are going right now. I'm figuring out where to put my eyes and so what to look at, and I've kind of got these the sort of the feel for it. <laughs> uh, this is the things of vlogging. Sometimes there are technical things that always go on. That's why I spent a large chunk of my time doing over the weekend is fixing up uh, the sound system for uh, uh, the church. Uh, we have both live and uh, broadcast off the same system, and uh, it's kind of tricky to balance the two uh, because. Uh, the uh, the servers, the priests and stuff like that have different requirements in terms of what they want in the church. But at the same time as you have to sort of uh, make allowances for um, uh, the uh, issues that occur during broadcast. And so there's a, a, a sort of, a, I have to sort of split the system into two different... <coughs> Segments or zones, one for broadcast and one for in-house, and that's going to be a bit of a challenge. It's working good now, uh, but there still needs some uh, fixing up. There's still some fixing up that needs to be done, so that's going to be a matter of time, and we'll see how things end up getting done. Uh, I ended up uh, gaming and doing uh, a. A three-hour, a three-hour um, three uh, meditation. Uh, that's what I'm coming back from now. I'm heading back to bed. I will show you probably this afternoon. We'll go go into the kitchen, show you the uh, cold brew tea that are, I, I do like the cold brew tea. Uh, I mix it with the, with the milk, so I have a milk tea. And uh, the Chinese tea is a little different than. Um, and same thing with the Indian tea is a little different than North American tea, is that in that it contains a number of herbs, and becomes a very healthy drink. It, it replaces, and this is sort of what's allowing me to sort of uh, uh, improve my recovery from an all nighter, is this sort of tea, and uh, it has it's almost like having a multivitamin. It's a meal in a cup. Uh, in terms of the nutrient value, it has uh, ingredients in there in terms of uh, for health benefits for for heart, uh, cardiac, the the uh, arterial sclerosis. <coughs> there is a number of health benefits uh, within the um, within the tea that I really do. Although I like the flavor, it does. I notice the effects. This tea, at the same time, is one of the things that adults talk about that kids don't talk about is regularity, and that's it, the, how you end up going to the bathroom. Uh, for, particularly for older people, one of the biggest things. Why do you, people look at older people and they say they're and they have these big bellies? Their 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 midsection is very large. Oh, well, what's the problem? And that's because they're not going to the bathroom properly. There's an issue. Uh, with going to bathroom, this goes back to chronic gas, and talking about real chronic gas, uh, and as the, these blockages blockages occur, uh, they have a hard time, you know, releasing the gas. They have a hard time with called the regulatory system, and it becomes an issue. And that's where you have the extended bellies. They have what looks like the extended bellies. Those are really the intestines, it's not the belly, in terms of the stomach. Uh, and the tea that I have, 
uh, allows me to do that, allows me to sort of regulate um, the... What appears to be doing, and this is what I've sort of figured out over a year, is... <coughs> and this is standard with all piping systems. As fluid moves through the pipe, there are deposits that end up on the wall of the pipe, and slowly but surely the, the, the diameter of the pipe starts to shrink. Because not all the stuff is getting out. The more stuff there is on, there is on the walls of the uh, of the pipe, the uh, the smaller the diameter will be, and the less that will flow actually flow through. The T that I have seems to be able to remove and loosen uh, the uh, the the, sti the the stuff that sticks on the side of the intestinal walls, uh, and because th 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 basically your intestinal system is a pipe. Uh, the food and everything that they digest move, that moves through it uh, can and does collect on the wall over a period of years, uh, uh, and uh, actually even over a period of months. And what this tea does is it it sort of dissolves the uh, materials that are on the walls of your your pipe, the, the, the called the gastrointestinal system, and allows things to flow free, freely. <clears throat> You're going to also sort of ignore the flubs in here every, every now and again. And I want to sort of remind people that a vlog, in this case here, are my notes. These aren't the essays. These are the notes. So there's going to be mistakes in here. There's going to be a lot of flubs. It is not designed to be perfect. This is part of the conversation. This is, you know, my notes are part of the conversation as I move along here. And so these things will come in. The, the mistakes will be left in there. You'll see the mistakes, you'll see, uh, particularly in terms of when you're speaking, you don't always necessarily catch the mistake while you're saying something. You, you, you correct, you, you hear it afterwards, or when you're playing it back, oh, I should have said that differently, or I should have said it this way, or I should have said it that way. And this ends up sort of allowing you to so-called so to correct yourself, and or not even necessarily correct yourself, but present a different phrase, take a topic and present it in a different manner. So all you're doing is you're not t changing the opinion, you're simply changing the presentation of it. And this is what this allows for. And you can see how I start, how I go, how I arrange things. Uh, in other words, you see the background work. And as, as a scientist, as a researcher, this is important. You have to know when a researcher produces a result, where does that result come from? You know, how does it seem to, how does it uh, uh, get into where it needs to get into? And a lot of times, uh, it, it, you know, it is something that uh, many researchers don't do. You don't see the behind the scenes. It takes a, a, it takes a good amount of research to go and do what's called the background research to do, to vet your sources. Uh, but in here, this is why I'm doing the vlogging, is that if someone's going to vet me as a source of uh, whatever they're going to look at, then uh, they'll have an easy time doing it because they'll see all the material that I have on YouTube, all the vlogs and everything, and they can sort of see how I go through things. And uh, But you're seeing here, I'm lying in bed. How many vloggers, while they're in bed, partially sleeping, have picked up their 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 camera and vlogged. So this is again this is real behind the scenes. Nothing's edited. I don't uh, do the you know I don't go out and film a morning routine because uh, when I don't have a routine. But at the same time, is that most of these routines that people are doing, they're not doing they're redoing it. They're re, they're refilming it uh, for their particular vlog or whatever they're doing, you know, for, for that vlog, for, for that, for that, uh, you know, get ready with me or my morning routine, my evening routine. So, uh, I think that's, we'll leave it here for now. I so will be going to the kitchen uh, later on today and uh, uh, showing you the tea that I make and sort of talking about that more there. And some of the sort of the purchases that I'm, I'm planning to make 
I did some shopping over the weekend as well online. And uh, looking forward to some new uh, stuff coming in. Well, we have a very quick package opening to do. Didn't think when we would have one today, but uh, we do have a package opening. I'm going to need the scissors. I thought I would be able to open it with my hands, but I'm not able to do that, so break out the scissors. Uh, some more. <laughs> Open it once or twice, you know, try to get at it, and sometimes it doesn't go the first time, so you have to do it again and again until you get a good opening. And yeah, next series of clothing came in. Uh, I buy a test batch, and then once I burst by the test batch and I find it works out, then I go buy the rest of them. So that's what that is today. Uh, I probably will be wearing it later on today. So uh, these are very cheap pants for $5. And keep me nice and warm in the winter and uh, good enough all the way into uh, the summer. Well, it is four hours and seven minutes into the Sixth day of April 2021. It's about, yeah, I'll say four o'clock in the morning and about ten minutes past. And I'm getting up to start my next section. I didn't, after I came home from my parents, I did some uh, gaming and meditation. By the time I finished around 11, uh, I just wasn't feeling it. So I just went to bed and sort of uh, worked over here at, at this research desk. So. I'm going to get the eyes exactly right. <laughs> um, I have another long day today. Uh, my shorts came in. I tried the shorts on. Uh, they were very good. Sorry, i got to scratch my head. They were very good. Uh, so I, I'm ordering another uh, five pairs. <laughs> so another five pairs. So... Uh, I'll have enough shorts for the summer. Uh, I did some ordering for the bedding. I ordered some uh, sheets. And I ordered uh, an audio cable. And uh, what else did I order? Oh, yeah. I, I'm trying out a new uh, storage box type of idea. So uh, I think these things are all going to work out. And then uh, we'll, but we'll go from there. I do have another order, a couple orders to put in. Uh, for the month, but uh, that's not going to occur right now. Um, <laughs> trying to think of what to say, it just kind of things are slipping my mind. Um, mm. this whole COVID thing is the well, yeah, it's the Connacht gas thing has got things people on edge. And a large chunk of it is fear. What's going on as I went through some of my files and some of the different sources that I have, it looks like we're in a global global biological warfare. Uh, this is sort of, if you will, a new Cold War that's being that's a sort of affecting everybody. And so it's not it has nothing to do with the, the the medical issue itself. But rather, it has to do with uh, national security uh, in terms of uh, uh, there is a global warfare game going on. You also have this great reset from the UN trying to really upset the global balance and push things back towards the European sphere. In other words, this is this is Germany all over. This is the Nazis all over again. Uh, <laughs> And they have their eugenics programs out there, and uh, it, what it appears to me is that, that what they're doing is they're euthanizing a lot of people. It began with George Floyd, I can't breathe. Then it went with COVID, I can't breathe. But 
it now appears that George Floyd, the reason why he couldn't breathe is uh, he was on a painkiller called fentanyl. And that causes a restriction of breath. It also causes cardiac arrest. And then when we're seeing people dropping dead with these blood clots in their system after they've done the, the autopsy, well, that's an indication of fentanyl. So, uh, you know, it, were they given the vaccine or were they given fentanyl? Most people, when someone puts a needle in your you're there for vac- vaccination, uh, you don't know what they're putting in your arm. You have no idea what they're putting in your arm. And so rather than have it, you know, and this could be the sort of luck of the lottery, uh, you know, these uh, agents will put it in, out of a batch of uh, of so many uh, uh, COVID shots, they'll put in, uh, you know, the, sort of the, the, the lucky one, or if you want, you know, not, not so lucky one. Uh, that is, instead of being the... The, the vaccine is actually fentanyl, and as they eject the person with fentanyl, they start feeling woozy, they start feeling uh, uh, tight-chested, and they can't breathe, and then they uh, have a heart attack. And this is, uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the uh, pathology of fentanyl. And ironically, it's the same thing now that they're saying with, COVID, with this new, these new variants of chronic gas. And ironically enough, if they know your virology, then the terms the terms they come out with are supposed to cover all variants. So when you know, someone says, oh, there's a new variant out, as a virologist, you know that that's inclusive in the initial title to begin with. So it's not surprising that the new variant comes out, because a new variant comes out all the time. It's It's... It, it's like this for almost all viruses are like that. Uh, you know, HIV is certainly like that. It's, it, it, it produces uh, 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 variants and strains on uh, so fast that, that they can't keep up with any of the uh, medications. So what they do is they treat the symptoms. And typically the symptoms are uh, things that are dealt with antibiotics. These are, these are, uh, are not viruses that they have to deal with in terms of these secondary infections, but rather uh, in terms of primary infections, they deal with the secondary infections, which are primarily um, um, bacteria and, uh, uh, well, fungal spores. These are in the higher orders of microbes. Uh, And these microbes, these single-celled organisms, Organisms are, were, would be infected by a virus. They could and can be infected by a virus. What they've done, actually, in terms of the the the, the falsification of reports, including the the uh, autopsy reports, and this is true with the media. But see, the media people don't understand. The media has always been part of uh, the intelligence services. It's never been separate. So people say, "Oh, yes, the the CIA took over the." Uh, now, this is what you have in the conspiracy theorists. The conspiracy theorists will say, oh, yes, the CIA took over uh, uh, all the news operations in, uh, in, during Operation Mockingbird. Well, the Operation Mockingbird was kind of a, a, uh, a sort of a red herring. Because if you went to the history of, of who Alan Dulles was, he came out of, he came out of, a, out of, uh, out of um, a Wall Street Journal, uh, Wall Street, uh, Washington Post, and... Uh, uh, New York Times. He was a newspaper. He was media, and so there was never a separation uh, between the CIA or, or the intelligence services uh, and uh, and media. This is true for the BBC. The BBC is exactly the same way. In most other uh, news organizations, there is a heavy presence or heavy influence from. Uh, the intelligence services, they're all within the, within the sort of uh, the confines. Although not everyone will know about that because, again, the clandestine service is not there to be open or, or called overt. They're there to be covert. That's why it's clandestine. <laughs> but then again, you know, most people, including these conspiracy theorists, don't look that far, and they don't care to look that far. They, they have their ideas. As long as they confirm their own ideas, then, yay, that's it. And I think it's not that conspiracy theorists are necessarily wrong in terms of the information they're putting forward. It's that they, just, they haven't completed the research. They haven't done 
the required background research to really understand what's going on. And so they, this is why the conspiracies, this is why they appear the way they appear. It is oh, this is so, so, so crazy. Because they're giving you your, you get, they're giving you their opinion. I have found this, and well, where did you find it? Where's your sources? And the thing is, ironically enough, there are good sources out there, publicly available, that you can go and take a look at. But the thing is, they don't do that. They they they, they put partial links in there. They put in, uh, they they don't give you. In other words, they, they give you an idea. They tell you, give you a theory. But don't tell you how to go about verifying the theory that's there. In other words, there's no background work in there, so you can't do any background research. Uh, there are no, like I tell people, want to understand what's going on with, with virology? Well, virology is essentially, uh, is essentially, it, well, not essentially, it is uh, quantum physics and organic chemistry. If you don't have organic chemistry and quantum physics, I'm a virologist. Well, sorry, you're not at the end point. The end point is quantum physics and organic chemistry. So a person from organic chemistry and quantum physics will have a better understanding of virology than a virologist would. Because he, the, the, the quantum physicist and the uh, organic chemist understands the underlying mechanisms on how a virus works. They understand the chemistry of it. And of course, the chemistry, because these are these are macromolecules, you have macromolecular physics. What is that? That's organic chemistry and quantum mechanics. Same thing with, with weather. I know about climate. I'm a climate scientist. Well, sorry. Unless you are, unless you are an atmospheric physicist, your qualifications aren't what they need to be. Because the underlying mechanisms of climate is atmospheric physics. Don't have atmospheric physics, then you're not. A, you don't necessarily understand climate science. You understand the current stuff that's going on, uh, but you don't understand the underlying mechanism. And you're not demonstrating underlying mechanism. You're simply spewing data. You're doing data analysis, and most of data analysis today, the big data thing, is nothing more than the Da Vinci Code. If you understand your mathematics, you understand the origins of calculus, then you understand that the, the data science of today is nothing more than an advanced version of Da Vinci Code, and Da Vinci Code goes back to uh, the Fibonacci series. These are things you can look up. But most people don't do that. The conspiracy theorists don't do that. And so they argue circles around each other. And this is how these uh, people who are, who are so-called the elites... This is how they create conflict. This is how they keep the, war, uh, ru the world uh, within their control because people don't know. And as long as they frighten people, then that's all that matters. Again, these things, the psychological war for the psychological operations, very well known. That's, there's Stanley Milgram, Dr. Philip Zimbardo, that's a Stanford University prison experiment. Uh, then you have uh, Edward Bernays, the manufacturing of consent. And that goes back to Sigmund Freud and Anna Freud. You want to move forward and see where the modern world comes from today? Go to Timothy Leary and Ram Dass. Again, giving you points to, points to research. You have a path in. Even though I can't give you specifics on the mechanism because it's classified, look up, again, point and source, D-U-R-C, Dirk, and DARPA. D-A-R-P-A, -A, DARPA. Do a search on that. Dirk, D-U-R-C, and, or plus, DARPA. See what comes up. Whole new perspective on things.